Welcome to Ron No Stuff. There's Coco. So today with me is Mrs. Ron No Stuff. We are going to recarpet this room here. It is the guest bedroom in our little, what would you call it, this house? Our vacation farmhouse. Our vacation farmhouse, right. Cute little house. Yeah. And we had to take all the carpet and padding out, and now we're just going to put in just a, a regular carpet just to hold us over till we decide how we want to do all the floors. Correct. So the first thing I did was remove the doors so they're out of my way. This house has floor vents, so I pulled those out of the way. And now I'm going through and pulling up any residue from the carpeting and uh, padding. padding that was there. So you see me with a, a automotive trim tool, <laughs> and that is a great little staple remover, and that's what they did. They stapled down the foam padding in certain areas. So I'm going through all of this and getting it up. I also walked around with my hammer. You can see it there. And I'm tapping down any nails that are sticking up. Uh, they use Not flush. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just to get a nice, smooth surface. So here you can kind of see me pulling out uh, carpet tacks as well as the foam padding. So and you had already taken the whole tracker up. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I took the track off when we ripped out the carpeting. We took the foam padding and the carpet tacks that went all the way around. Here I'm digging underneath the molding to get any little uh, carpet residue out that have a nice surface to work with. So now I'm doing just a double check. Coco's inspecting to make sure I did a good, good job. She thinks I did. And I walk around with my flashlight just to focus my vision to make sure I've gotten everything. Now over here, there was a squeak in the floor and this is where two uh, floorboards met. So what I did was I put more screws in the seam just to give there some space. And later on, I'm gonna smack some glue in there. Here I'm vacuuming up everything so that I have a nice smooth surface to work with. And since we're doing a commercial grade of carpet, that we didn't do padding underneath. So that's why you had to make sure everything was smooth and level and not have little bumps and nicks in it. And yeah. And it we wouldn't be forgiven under padding because there isn't padding under this commercial. Right. Carpet. And one of the things that we, we, one of the reasons we chose a commercial grade carpeting is because we were just going to throw a, a rug on top of it anyway. So we just didn't want any fancy flooring and um, really wanted to take our time to, be in the house more to get a feel for it before so I can see what I want for all the floors. Yeah. And this, this buys us time. It's got 10 year, 15 year warranty on this carpet. I don't remember what. And it was 17 cents a square foot. Hello. Well, that's because I found a tremendous sale because yeah. that's what I do. So here you see me taping the areas where the vents are so that I know where they are so I don't step in them. And number two, that I can cut the holes properly in the carpet. So that just gives me an end-to-end -end measurement. Uh, another nice thing is this room and the closet and our master closet, we are able to carpet for, t with the glue, 27 bucks. So that's really cheap. Here I'm putting some uh, underfloor layment and some low spots so that... Uh, they had done a repair of some sort, yeah. and they didn't. their board wasn't quite the same height as the, the floor. So that'll help compensate for it. Here I'm smushing in wood glue to try and silent that squeak, and it worked pretty well. Here we have the carpeting, and I don't remember the size of it, but... Um, I think it was a 12, 13 by 13? 12. Yeah, it was something big. He did a little extra because they didn't have it perfectly cut. Yeah. At the store so what you do is you kind of lay out the mm -hmm. carpet into the room uh, you you want to work from one corner you get the nice machine cut against a, a wall that's um, square perpendicular to another wall and then you just kind of kick it until you get a nice corner done you use your putty knife uh, a three or six inch putty knife um, to push it under the baseboard so that you get a nice clean look and that also you can use it to put your carpet cutter or carpet your blade knife. yeah carpet knife um 
you shove it in with the uh, putty knife and then you use the carpet knife to cut a nice clean under nice clean cut underneath the baseboards and that's kind of what you see me doing here and so you can only go a little bit at a time yeah i chose to use the three inch um putty knife because i didn't have a six inch with me up at this home i have it at our other home uh but it would work fine and it kept me going at a honest pace let's just say it that way so as you can see i'm, I'm just going around kicking the carpet getting it nice and smooth and as tight as I can, um, just to make sure that uh, when I do these last cuts, um, it, it, it fits in pretty well. And as you can see, it's looking good already. Mrs. Ron No Stuff is just helping me uh, get a couple of little spots. I keep reminding her that the uh, you can see the little tape marks where the air vents are so that she doesn't walk in it. But yet I managed to step on it every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny thing, though, is Coco was running loose and she didn't bother coming in. So she must have been napping somewhere. Actually, I think she was. Yeah. She likes to nap at this house. Well, she, we bought her that new bed that she was enjoying as well. Yeah, so. she was giving it a good test run, wasn't she? And the doorway is blocked with the excess yeah. carpet that hasn't been trimmed yet. So here you get a better vision of what I was talking about with the carpet knife and the putty knife. Use the putty knife to shove it in and then use that as a straight edge to cut the carpet. Going around corners, sometimes you got to do a little seaming, um, or not seaming, but um, stretch it out um, and, and put a relief cut so that you can work it around the, the area. And that's what I'm doing right there. And right there, a nice little relief cut so I can work it in underneath the uh, baseboard and the, the door frame. So it, it can be tedious work. It's not hard. It just takes time. So be patient and um, you'll, you'll find it works pretty well. Here I'm just cutting off what I know is excess trim to get it out of my way so that I can better work the putty knife. And while this is a, a faster video of what you did, it really wasn't. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. No, really. not at all. And I will tell you, so there's the carpet is bound and you'll see little grid patterns on the back of the carpet. Just a little bit of advice. And if you look right there on the one side piece on the right side, you can see that those grids are not true. They're not like graph paper. So don't follow them thinking that, you know, that's going to work. So here I vacuumed up um, the, the carpet before I did this. Um, you might have noticed that I've changed. You've pulled it back because you're going to secure it to the floor. Yeah, but we laid out the carpet for uh, overnight just to give it a you know a chance to really flatten out and um, um, give me a break because I think I was hungry. <laughs> so, yeah, we decided normally with commercial grade carpet, you glue the whole thing down, but we decided because this is just temporary, um, we're just going to glue around the edges so it's easier to remove. And that's kind of what you see me doing. Glue around the air vents. I've cut those out. It's really easy to do, especially with me having put those blue uh, tape marks on the wall. It helped me show, see where the ends were. And, um, and since we're using it as a spare bedroom and not an activity type of room, the bed and the dresser are going to take up the majority of the room. So there's no reason to. Yeah. So and I'm vacuuming everything, gluing everything. We're all done. Now, I will tell you that, um, you know, we're going to do a lot more videos with this house. So I urge you to like, subscribe, and share so that you can follow uh, as we progress with this um, little second home that we have until we retire. And if you have questions, put it in the comments and we'll get back to them. Remember to like and subscribe and keep watching. Welcome to Ron Knows Stuff.